Kind of mixed on this episode. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, episode four. So, there's some stuff in here that I think is really good. And some stuff that... I'm not going to say it's suddenly gone bad. But rather than finding a way around or to work with or to mitigate or to sidestep some of the inherent issues with some of the premise. Which I haven't really talked about but I've kind of had it in the back of my head. Uh, it instead kind of barrels into them somewhat clumsily, which is really unfortunate because I feel like the show thinks it's addressing the elephant in the room, um, but it, it's it's not doing it with much effectiveness. It's just bringing your attention to the elephant that was actually just a little statuette of an elephant in the corner, and you hadn't really noticed it before unless you were really paying attention. Now you're going, oh, yeah, that is there, isn't it? So boy, where do I want to start? You know what? Since I, since I led with that, uh, why don't we back burner it for the, <laughs> for the time being, just to string you along and keep you watching more of this review than maybe you would have otherwise. So, stuff that is good. Uh, I really liked Ao and her, uh, her support. I liked watching them come in with their spears and just wreck shop. I also dig the justification. For some reason it hadn't occurred to me that their main thing would be going after Zemo, which makes absolute sense because if they have come to terms with the fact that Bucky was under someone else's control when Bucky uh, killed T'Chaka, well, Bucky probably didn't do, may not have done it at all, but even if he did, he definitely was not in his right mind, but that still means that whoever sent him and was controlling him is responsible, and that's Zemo. So, it had not really occurred to me how much they're kind of ticked off at Bucky, and how focused they're going to be on getting Zemo. Uh, that said, as much as I liked the action scene, the fact that Zemo just slipped away when all when there were all those people in the room and they let him do it kind of annoyed me. I actually kind of wish that they hadn't shown Zemo going into this other room because the fact that he was just quietly going in there and shutting the door, I was like, is nobody, any, somebody? Mm. I, I wish it kind of had just been, we have the action scene and then it stops and they look around and go, where's Zemo? Like, I think honestly think that would have worked better. I, I feel like they highlighted too much of how he got out the door and it makes everybody else look dumb. So, <laughs> we're already kind of at, at a mixed bag there. I do really like uh, the little conversation that happens between Battlestar and John Walker, the new Captain America. So, what Battlestar Lamar says is ex was exactly what was in my mind. Because, at this point, it's now like the second set of characters pondering the question, would you take the super soldier serum if it was available to you? Because Zemo had brought up the question to uh, Sam earlier. And that was a real good conversation as well. But hang on, I'll come back to that. So what I really loved about that talk between John Walker and Lamar was that Lamar said exactly what was on my mind, which is it's just going to make you more of who you are. Because, you know, the phrase that everyone knows is power corrupts, but it doesn't. Power reveals. If you have the power to do whatever it is you want to do, that's not going to suddenly change you and make you do stuff you wouldn't have done otherwise. It's just going to empower you to do the things you always wanted to do anyways. And that is why Steve Rogers is a pinnacle, because he was somebody who wasn't secretly harboring terrible desires that he wanted to do with power. And so once he had power, he did good things with it. Which factors into the conversation between Zemo and Sam, where Zemo says, look, this tarnishes everybody. And Sam is quick to point out, didn't tarnish Steve Rogers. And Zemo doesn't even argue that point. He's like, no, you're right. But there hasn't been another Steve Rogers. So that it kind of gives another layer to Zemo's worldview and his issue with the super soldier serum. It's not that he thinks the super soldier serum makes people bad. He assumes people are bad and therefore giving them that kind of power is going to make them worse. He, he has an inherently pessimistic view of humanity and it 
fits into his whole mentality really, really well. So I like both those conversations in isolation and the way they feed into each other is really, really good. So now that I've kind of done what I think is going to be most of my, pre well, you know what, let's, let's deal with John Walker a little bit. Um, I feel they're doing a pretty good job in terms of showing his, uh, his trajectory and where things are going very, very south. That said, it was slightly predictable. I was, I was annoyed that they killed Battlestar, that they killed Lamar in this Primarily just to motivate John uh, into his downward spiral, which, granted, he maybe needed a push. I mean, maybe we'll find out next episode that Lamar is not dead, which honestly would be nice, because he just had to be hurt to motivate what John did um, in terms of the very end. That last shot, though, with the blood all along the bottom of the shield, that, oh, that was a good shot. So, having now addressed... All that stuff. Dealing with Carly, that's where the show, it it does what I think it thought was a clever way to address its main themes, but it just kind of highlighted the problems a bit. So here's the thing that's been in the back of my head, and it's what I can't help but think of as the Dark Knight Rises Bane problem. Because if you have ever gone back and rewatched The Dark Knight Rises, Bane, in terms of his stated goals and the fervor that he is riling up in Gotham, is validated. Like, he's looking to take apart a very, very broken, hostile, abusive system of finance and class. And that is backed up by the fact that so many people at the bottom of the rung rise up with him to some degree, which shows that, like, they knew how bad they had it. But he's been designated the villain, so you can't let him be totally in the right. Therefore, he has to also have a bomb that he's threatening to blow up the city, which is something that always bugged me about that because it's absolutely counter to everything else he claims that he's doing. So it either means that his stated mission is a front because he just wants to blow things up, or he doesn't realize that he's completely undermining his own damn point. So it makes the character inconsistent as best, and it tips the hand as to the intentions of the writers who don't want their, uh, their villain who has... Uh, somewhat understandable ideology to be too sympathetic because we still have to be okay with Batman punching him in the end. And we've got a similar issue going on right now with Carly because Carly, frankly, has an increasingly understandable motivation. And the more we get to know her and see the people around her and understand what they've gone through, the more reasonable her position becomes. Therefore... The show has to have her undertake excessive actions, which already started with the end of the previous episode when she blew up a building that still had people in it. And the only stated reason in the universe for that is this is the only language they understand. I'm like, okay, but you couldn't have blown up an empty building and said next time we'll blow up with something with someone in it? Like, the they they push her too far too fast. And it just is to make us more okay with her and her organization being villainized. Now, that said, she is not as clear-cut a villain as Bane was in Batman, uh, in that third Batman movie. So, fair's fair. The comparison isn't 100%. But it is still falling to the same kind of traps. Because you have people flat out saying, I agree with your cause, but not your methods. Now, here's the thing about that. In a vacuum, that sentiment, that statement, that concept is fine. Because any cause can have radicalized elements and people who will take a cause worth fighting for to an extreme that nobody should be doing. So the general idea of you're fighting for the right thing in the wrong way is valid. That is a valid concept. Here's the problem. Right now, in the culture we currently live in, in a culture that this show is clearly aware of because it is addressing aspects of it, 
That is a phrase often used to shut down any reasonable objection or protest or civil action. It's the kind of thing that gets told to Black Lives Matter protesters and to anyone objecting to the treatment of caged detainees at the border and people who are trying to push for gun legislation in the wake of mass shootings. Like, there are people who just say flat out what you want is wrong, but then you have all these middle ground people who I actually think in many ways are more damaging because they say, I don't know, I agree you have a point, but this isn't the way to do it. Okay, then what is? If you're going to argue that, you have to give an alternate way that this should be gone about. And unfortunately, Sam doesn't. He just regurgitates the sentiment, I understand what you're fighting for, but you're fighting for it in the wrong way. Here, I, I, I've reached a point where just the culture where we're at now, and knowing how that phrase and that sentiment is used to undermine, belittle, and silence people who are just trying to be heard at all, who aren't radicalized, but who just want to be recognized and want their voices heard and are still being told, nah, that's not the way to go about it. Yeah, no, I, I'm kind of uncomfortable with that phrase being used by one of the heroes of the show in a manner that is very unexamined. Because if Sam could have offered her something like, the way you're going about this is wrong, I will help you do it this way, and she then rejects an alternate way that he offers, there, that still might have gone south. But that at least would have been a situation where she is given a different way to do it, but she's committed to doing it the way she is. And that would have been uh, a characterization of sort of uh, possibly a level of arrogance and her belief that her specific way is the only way for it to happen that would have lent more credence than to just drop, you know, you're fighting for your cause in the wrong way and just leave it there. Because uh, honestly, at this point, that that sentiment is a thought terminating cliche and it was really frustrating to see a show that really does seem to want to grapple with these issues and these elements and these complications of both its fictional world and the real world that it's pulling influence from just drop a thought terminating cliche like that and move forward that was frustrating now, we've got two episodes left, so I'm not writing the thing off at this point. But that that scene, that interaction, honestly, between Sam and Carly really frustrated me because I could tell that the show was trying to use that scene to be sure that its, you know, it, its statements and its positions were clear. But all it did was muddy things. It, it didn't accomplish what it was supposed to. And it didn't accomplish some of what other parts of the same episode did or what the show has been doing up to this point it it was just frustrating and again not awful i'm not turned on the show i'm just annoyed to see that it it appears to have recognized one of the inherent problems with some of the ideas that it's dealing with in the world that it's set but then doesn't actually, and like, I think it's hard is in the right place. So I don't think it's an issue of message. I think it's an issue of poor communication in terms of what it seems to want to do and what it actually said. So ironically enough, the show itself, I agree with what it's trying to do, but not the way that it went about it. Because that scene especially lacks the nuance that is present in most of the rest of the franchise. So I will tell them the alternate way that they could have done it better. Just look at almost everything else that you've done in this show so far. <laughs> the, the issues of Carly blowing up and deliberately killing people, and then that scene between her and Sam not landing right, at least with me not landing right, I can point to almost everything else in the show and say, this! You've got it everywhere else. 
it's just these things that you've done, which these are the things that feel the most contrived. These feel the most like somebody, whether it be the writer for these specific episodes or the showrunner or the studio or whoever, putting their hand in and say, okay, we got to make sure that it's clear she's the villain. And we got to make sure that people understand that how she's going about this, no matter what they think about her cause, that's the wrong way to do it. It feels like hand of the author. And it is jarring and doesn't quite work. So, yeah, very mixed on this particular episode. But what did you think about it? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Like, share, subscribe. I have a Patreon. There may be a link up there. More likely, sound in the description because YouTube is broken and won't respond to me when I tell them that. But uh, in any case, any amount you're able to help on the Patreon is of great assistance. There are perks at every tier, but you don't have to. The other stuff I mentioned, the likes, the shares, subscribes, they help me out as well, but no pressure on that either. Because I take a relaxed attitude around here, so you can just come on back next time you need a break.